Management of genital herpes in pregnancy. Background. Neonatal herpes is very rare but serious viral infection with a high morbidity and mortality. It is classified into three subgroups in the infant depending on the site of infection. Disease localized to skin, eye, and or mouth. Local central nervous system or CNS disease encephalitis alone, and disseminated infection with multiple organ involvement. Disease localized to skin, eye, and or mouth. Infants who present with symptoms localized to the skin, eye, or mouth alone have the best prognosis and represent approximately 30% of neonatal herpes infections. With appropriate antiviral treatment, Neurological and or ocular morbidity is less than 2%. Local CNS or central nervous system disease and disseminated infection. 70% of infants with neonatal herpes have disseminated and or CNS infection and approximately 60% of infants with local CNS and or disseminated disease will present without skin eye, and or mouth infection. Infants with local CNS disease often present late, generally between 10 days and 4 weeks of age. With antiviral treatment, mortality from local CNS disease is around 6% and neurological morbidity, which may be lifelong, is 70%. Disseminated disease carries the worst prognosis with appropriate antiviral treatment, mortality is around 30% and 17% have long-term neurological sequelae. The poor outcomes of disseminated and local CNS disease have been attributed to delays between symptom onset and treatment. Neonatal infection occurs as the result of an infection at the time of birth, in contrast, Congenital herpes is extremely rare and occurs by transfer of infection in utero. Incidence Neonatal herpes is rare in the UK. The incidence in the UK is around 50% of that reported from other European countries. In the USA, the average reported incidence is 1 in 15,000. Etiology Neonatal herpes may be caused by herpes simplex virus type 1 or HSV1 or herpes simplex virus type 2 or HSV2 as either viral type can cause genital herpes in the mother. Approximately 50% of neonatal herpes is due to HSV1 and 50% due to HSV2. Most cases of neonatal herpes occur as a result of direct contact with infected maternal secretions, although in 25% of cases, a possible source of postnatal infection was identified, usually a close relative of the mother. Postnatal infection may occur as a result of exposure to orolabial herpes infection. Transmission Factors associated with transmission include the type of maternal infection, primary or recurrent, the presence of transplacental maternal neutralizing antibodies, the duration of rupture of membranes before delivery, the use of fetal scalp electrodes, and the mode of delivery. The risks are greatest when a woman acquires a new infection primary genital herpes in the third trimester, particularly within six weeks of delivery, as viral shedding may persist and the baby is likely to be born before the development of protective maternal antibodies. Rarely, congenital herpes may occur as a result of transplacental intrauterine infection. Case reports suggest that the skin, eyes, and CNS may be affected 
and there may be fetal growth restriction or fetal death. Disseminated herpes is more common in preterm infants and occurs almost exclusively as a result of a primary infection in the mother. Although recurrent genital herpes is associated with a very low risk of neonatal herpes, recurrent herpes at the time of delivery, which is commonly asymptomatic or unrecognized, may cause the localized forms of neonatal herpes. Both local CNS disease and skin, eye and mouth infection. Transplacentally, acquired HSV antibodies do not prevent herpes virus spreading to the brain of the neonate. Disseminated herpes infection in the mother. Disseminated herpes, which may present with encephalitis, hepatitis, Disseminated skin lesions or a combination of these conditions is rare in adults. However, it has been more commonly reported in pregnancy, particularly in the immunocompromise. The maternal mortality associated with this condition is high. All immunocompromised women, such as those infected with the HIV virus, are at increased risk of more severe and frequent symptomatic recurrent episodes of genital herpes during pregnancy and of asymptomatic shedding of HSV at term. Management of pregnant women with first episode genital herpes. First or second trimester acquisition until 27 plus 6 weeks of gestation. There is no evidence of an increased risk of a spontaneous miscarriage with primary genital herpes in the first trimester. Women with suspected genital herpes should be referred to a genital urinary medicine physician who will confirm or refute the diagnosis by viral polymerase chain reaction or PCR, advice on management of genital herpes, and arrange a screen for other sexually transmitted infections. Treatment, however, should not be delayed. Management of the woman should be in line with her clinical condition and will usually involve the use of oral acyclovir or intravenous acyclovir for disseminated HSV in standard doses of 400 mg three times daily, usually for five days. The use of acyclovir is associated with a reduction in the duration and severity of symptoms and a decrease in the duration of viral shedding. Acyclovir is not licensed for use in pregnancy, but it is considered safe and has not been associated with an increased incidence of birth defects. Transient neonatal neutropenia has been reported, but no clinically significant adverse maternal or neonatal effects have been reported. Acyclovir is well tolerated in pregnancy. There is no evidence of an increased risk of birth defects with acyclovir, famciclovir, or valaciclovir if used in the first trimester. Use of valaciclovir or famciclovir are not recommended as a first-line treatment. The obstetrician should be informed. Paracetamol and topical lidocaine 2% gel can be offered as symptomatic relief. Women with suspected genital herpes who are having midwifery-led care should be referred for review by an obstetrician, ideally after review by a genital urinary medicine physician. Providing that delivery does not ensue within the next six weeks, the pregnancy should be managed expectantly and vaginal delivery anticipated. There is no evidence that HSV acquired in pregnancy is associated with an increased incidence of congenital abnormalities. Following first or second trimester acquisition, daily suppressive acyclovir of 400 mg three times daily from 36 weeks of gestation reduces HSV lesions at term and hence the need for delivery by cesarean section.
it has also been shown to reduce asymptomatic viral shedding. Third trimester acquisition from 28 weeks of gestation. Treatment should not be delayed. Management of the woman should be in line with her clinical condition and will usually involve the use of oral acyclovir or intravenous acyclovir for disseminated HSV in a standard doses of 400 mg three times daily, usually for five days. In a third trimester, treatment will usually continue with daily suppressive acyclovir of 400 mg three times daily until delivery. Cesarean section should be the recommended mode of delivery for all women developing first episode genital herpes in a third trimester particularly those developing symptoms within six weeks of expected delivery, as the risk of neonatal transmission of HSV is very high at 41%. 15% of cases where a woman presents with a first episode of clinical HSV infection, it will actually be a recurrent infection. For women presenting with first episode genital herpes in the third trimester, particularly within six weeks of expected delivery, type-specific HSV antibody testing, immunoglobulin G antibodies to HSV1 and HSV2 is advisable. The presence of antibodies of the same type as the HSV isolated from genital swabs would confirm this episode to be a recurrence rather than a primary infection and elective cesarean section would not be indicated to prevent neonatal transmission. It should be noted that it may take 2-3 to three weeks for the result of this test to become available. It is therefore recommended that an initial plan of delivery should be based on the assumption that all first episode lesions are primary genital herpes. This plan can then be modified if HSV antibody test results subsequently confirm a recurrent rather than a primary infection. Serology can be complicated. Results should be discussed with a virologist or genitourinary medicine physician. Management of pregnant women with recurrent genital herpes. Women with recurrent genital herpes should be informed that the risk of neonatal herpes is low even if lesions are present at the time of delivery, 0-3% to for vaginal delivery. The majority of recurrent episodes of genital herpes are short-lasting and resolve within 7-10 to 10 days without antiviral treatment. Supportive treatment measures using saline bathing and analgesia with standard doses of paracetamol alone will usually suffice. Vaginal delivery should be anticipated in the absence of other obstetric indications for cesarean section. Daily suppressive acyclovir of 400 mg three times daily should be considered from 36 weeks of gestation. There is no increased risk of preterm labor preterm pre-labor rupture of membranes, or fetal growth restriction associated with women seropositive for HSV. The incidence of congenital abnormalities is not increased in the presence of recurrent genital herpes infection.